Whether you decide to tell a story through your photographs or words, if you can tell it in an elegant way, people will pay attention. Ace photographer Mani Lama is one such eloquent storyteller, and his three decades of work is a case in point. Known for his postcards of Nepal, coffee table book Nepal, the Himalayan Kingdom, and professional work for various organizations, the maestro of lens takes photos equally well in black and white and in color. I have become an artist, like a painter, which I paint my uh, work with my camera, in the sense that I use the light to whatever subject I, whatever I see, is the light that captures me, you know. So, if I had my, if I had, had my camera, I'll pull it out and click right away. If not, I say, I wish I had my camera. Or if not, then next time I will always try to say, when I have that, uh, in that spot or the subject I see, I, tr I try to get that, you know. The most important thing for a photographer is to identify with the people he or she clicks and to portray the subjects as us rather than them. Lama has a way of putting people at ease, a friendship fostered through clicks and shutter releases because it helps break down barriers and allows him to get better pictures. Sometimes all you have to do is listen to your subjects and really collaborate with them because they have the answers, not you or your camera. I belong to a family called the Chinin Lama family. Who Chinin Lama family are the caretakers of both Nath Stupa. During Jangabadha's time, there was a war between Tibet and Nepal, and so uh, my grandfather, my great great grandfather, was also here then. He came here to Nepal as a pilgrim, uh, to, you know, as a pilgrim. So he didn't go, he, instead he went to Pashupati. In Pashupati, Arya Ghat area, there are caves area, where the, the sadhus meditate. And so he went and meditated, but the palace found out that because of the war, found out there is this Chinese Lama in the cave, he must be a spy. So they asked him to come to the palace. They found out that he could speak Tibetan, Chinese, read, write, and all that. He was a scholar. So they said, okay, you go with our uh, team to, to Tibet and see what you can do for us. And so he was sent twice. The war was settled. Jangabad, that was then the, the, the prime minister, the first prime, Rana prime minister. He was so happy. And then they asked him what he liked. He said, I would like to live here in Nepal. So, okay, you be the caretaker of, of Boda, Soyambu, and Lumbini. So that was his job offered, and then they gave him Tamapatra, rewriting, and it would pass on from generation to generation. Mani Lama has been clicking professionally for more than three decades. His portfolio is saturated with breathtaking captures, from landscape photographs to ethnographic portraits that date back as far as the 70s. His passion has always been to reflect and hopefully preserve the culture and beauty of Nepal through his lens. I had about uh, 13 siblings from my father's side and then so lucky fortunately uh, my grandfather uh, sent me and my cousin to St. Xavier's uh, for education then that was the thing in 1954-55 Boda itself the, it was so small you know the, there are so many uh, so little a few houses and the, the, the surroundings, all rice fields and corn fields and potato fields. Whenever we wanted to go to Kathmandu, we had to walk. It used to take one and a half hours to go to, uh, to town, to Kathmandu. And to see a movie, we had to walk. And then it used to cost us like 25 paisa, you know, to uh, fourth class, they used to say, in the front row, paisa, you know. And then <laughs> you, you, buy, you buy a ticket and see the movie and then come walk back to Bodha, you know. While studying in Mahindra Ratna Bhavan, Lama was introduced to photography through a couple of his friends who were already into clicking photos. The prospect of capturing a moment in time and telling a story about the characters or a place intrigued him. He shares that his first real good acquaintance with photography was through an American couple who had come to Nepal to conduct a research on parasites. The uh, job was to collect parasites from wild animals and then uh, they collect parasites from them and send the parasites to America. And they used to uh, find out, uh, like, like the, the parasites were like ticks, lice, mites, and fleas. There were places where they couldn't go, like Mustang, and I was sent. 
by then instead of just translating they taught they had already taught me how to do what they were doing is correct collecting parasites they they gave this to give me the camera and slides and say please take some photos for us and so i used to take nice stories and all that but i collected a, a new genus a new species of tick a tick and they named it after me because it was never discovered before uh, anomalae lama tick seeing how agricultural dependent nepal was mani lama wanted to get into this field he got an opportunity to study agriculture in california along with photography after spending 5 years in the us a confident and a very hopeful lama was back in the country to change the course of his life only to be stopped dead in his tracks as he came face to face with a wall of bureaucracy after searching for a job for more than 2 years and getting nowhere he finally decided to give up and embraced photography my friends here were all photographers and i always used to have some kind of small camera my father gave me and so uh, i used to click here and there and and then there was the oro film which was uh, they used to come in refills they used to come in 100 uh, uh meter uh, reels and then uh, the, the the raz photo house in tamil they used to carry them and refill it refill it in this canister and then sell it us for 2 rupees 1 rupees you know some of them used to have scratches but for us it was so it was a trial anyway so and if i knew when i used to take that there was a, going to be scratch on and the scratch used to be always on the bottom so whenever i aimed at something so i would leave that part uh, that i could crop it you know think like that so anyways so my photography was already there i was interested in photography and then when i got this project there my boss and his wife also had a camera and being an avid clicker mani lama has the habit of taking photos of anything and everything as long as it appealed to his senses that's how he got the idea of starting a postcard series which depicted nepal through various subjects like festivals temples portraits as opposed to just mountains The series was an instant hit and Mani Lama got a new moniker the postcard man postcard crashed after 1989 because my business went up but then uh, that that was the time when i printed millions i came back uh, and then i had all my postcards in the garage that summer in a monsoon half of them got drowned and then that was the year when so called uh, nepal and india band and then no tourist and then 1990 so called democracy for 2 years then i couldn't hang on to postcards and then i have to pay you know i mean it's a big business so i i i went i said okay this is enough and then by then i had already written to apply to all the uh, ingos unicef undp zz karita save the children Uh, and so they knew my work by then that I was a, a photographer i used to do the job they want but in an artistic way instead of just i could have just said okay la ganusta you khaunusta bana you know when you have a, a photo which the artistic you can see wow this is nice you know mani lama is thankful to his vocation of taking photographs for it has given him identity and also many reasons to travel learning to travel mindfully and clicking photos to capture those particular time and places has enriched his life like nothing else could have for him travel has become a strategy for accumulating photographs and vice versa oh i'm making a book uh, border renovation because uh, uh, after the earthquake there is a 15 saal april 25th na to thulo bhuinchala puga pachi chai hamro nepal especially Kathmandu ab jata tha ni and te bela mu te din jel sama i was a, i was shocked because i'm so attached to both okay so photo khichne ko sata la hogi bhana i was so shocked i camera pan na liya ani malai sathi har le eh e tim har tya everybody safe what happened to both of them what happened to both of them and i pulled out my mobile phone and click 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 garera and te pa pathako ani and it was about they brought the bamboo scaffold then i said wow this is a good opportunity for me maybe i should record 
what is happening Bandera. I mean, yeah, it's going to be, uh, I mean, we could, right now it's called Boda Book, but it's a renovation, a restoration Boda, but name we haven't chosen, but it'll be, uh, hopefully, it'll come at the end of this year, a bird year. <laughs>